If you ever wondered how a breaker panel actually works and the electricity flows through it, well stick around and today we'll talk about it. So we're just going to take the wire, gently pull down. The cord is pretty much melted together. So there we have our end, our finished end with our... So breaker panels, typically household breaker panels, have a voltage coming in from the utility which goes through a meter and then comes through a main breaker. This breaker disperses the power through sub breakers or branch circuit breakers, what we call them. It is actually an alternating AC current which is drawn as is needed to satisfy the load that you're trying to run. So for example, if you have something plugged in, like a heater, it requires a load to run that heater or it, it, it's asking for power. So that power is then pulled from the panel through the breaker to satisfy that load, which we also call wattage of a load. I'll take the panel cover off and I'll show you the internals. So through the internals of the panel, the main circuitry comes in through this 100 amp breaker. Each side of this 100 amp breaker is 120. Between the two, you get 240. The third wire that comes in, in this main compartment, goes underneath this bar here. So this bar is called the neutral bar, okay, on each side. And then each one of these is a bus bar. Some people call them a spline. Every second one is one side. So when you put a double pole breaker on, you get 120 on each side or 240 between. Now the electricity, or the voltage, is the potential. So that's actually the push or what's there available, which comes through the breaker, flows through the breaker down the spline, and then out to the branch circuits as they need power. So each one of these branch circuits, when it consumes power, it pulls the electricity in alternating current out to the device or the load that's being required. Now, as each device is being required, each device is calling for power, that would be the end of the line or what, it, what you're trying to achieve. So as mentioned earlier, a heater, a light bulb, a device, a, an appliance, anything like that that requires power. So power is your watts. Now in order to achieve that, it needs something to push, to, to push it through. So the voltage is what pushes it through. The amperage is what's being pulled to satisfy that device. So each, amp, each amperage rating is specific to each size breaker. So a 15 amp breaker would be rated for uh, 15 amps, a 20 amp breaker would be rated for 20 amps, etc, etc. And each one of those are associated with a certain wattage for the circuit. Now as this pulls through, if it exceeds what the actual limit of the breaker is, then the breaker will trip. We call that an overload or an overcurrent. Now as you can see if we look closely, this one for here for example is hooked onto a 15 amp breaker. This wire goes out to what we call a counter plug here. The other end of the white, which is called the neutral or the identified conductor, is hooked onto that bar. So between this one breaker, which comes in off of the main here, between this one breaker, the power flows alternating, actually 60 times a second, or depending on where you are in the world, it could be 50, 50 times a second, um, between this black wire and between this white wire. If any of those are broken, then the circuit will not work. Now vice versa, panels will work in both directions. So not only can you pull power from the breaker, but you can send power back on the breaker, hence that's how solar actually works. It sends power back through the breaker to the main utility backwards through your meter and pumps it back to the grid. Now to get a little deeper into this to talk more about the circuitry, as the breaker works and pulls the power, you have several different types of circuits that can be in a panel. So we have our two wire circuits which are hot and are identified or are hot and are neutral. And then we have our 240 volt circuits which are just uh, the red and the black which pull power 240 between the two. And then we also have what we call three wire circuits. So if this were a dryer it would have a neutral. In that term it's actually called a neutral but that's a whole other video to get into. Basically it supplies 240 between the breaker and then 120 between each side 
and the neutral. So in a dryer, for example, the heating element would be 240 and the timer and the light would probably be 120. So that pretty much sums it up on the very basics and principles of how an electrical panel actually works and the current and the electricity flow through it. If you want to see more on electrical panels and breakers, click up here in the corner. Don't forget to like and subscribe or click the link in the description down below where all our videos are organized in a nice searchable fashion. That's it for today and we'll see you next time.